Welcome to Inside, produced in partnership with KLCS in Los Angeles. Today we are chatting with Maria Salinas, President and CEO of the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce. Maria has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Maria, for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. Talk about the Chamber, its motivations, its mission within the Los Angeles context. Sure, um, for Los Angeles, we're very lucky to have the LA area Chamber of Commerce represent not only our business community here, but what we'd like to talk about is the entire community that is represented here in Los Angeles. Our membership is not only made up of businesses, but it includes uh, educational institutions, nonprofits, uh, community organizations that uh, traverse a variety of spectrums. We look at the entire ecosystem and one of our vision, our vision is prosperity for all. It's to have a thriving Los Angeles region. So when you unpack that, what does that mean? That means that we have businesses that can employ the workforce that is here locally, the diverse workforce that we have here in Los Angeles. That means that we want to promote uh, a good educational system that can lead to having uh, building that pipeline of that workforce that is so important for businesses to have. And if we can do all of that, we know that we can create communities that are thriving. And at the end of the day, it's one big organization, one big community that can thrive with a, a chamber like the Los Angeles Chamber. So it's really a civil society perspective. It's the yes. whole idea of creating a community that is healthy, that is vital, that has educated citizens, educated citizens who provide the workforce that um, you have healthy families so that uh, people are not incredibly stressed and, and through that stress are unable to function within society. It's, it's, it's about social cohesion um, so that business, business can actually uh, take place within a, a, a peaceful environment. It's a, it's a much broader picture than simply lobbying for this or that uh, particular legislation or or regulation or, uh, or interest. Yes, absolutely, but first and foremost, the, the LA Chamber is about business and it's about um, the advocacy work around business, but we, but we don't look at it in such a singular manner that it's not just about taxes and regulations. Right. It is about the healthy outcomes that you're talking about, healthy families, healthy a healthy workforce because we know that if we can have all those systems that are working, that are producing that healthy workforce, that workforce that is ready to go into those new jobs that are emerging here in Los Angeles, we have a, a tech community here that is thriving, it is growing. We should be able to uh, have that same pipeline that is going into corporate America to go into these emerging business sectors that we have here in Los Angeles. And when we do that, we keep that economy moving and we keep our, our communities growing. So for the Los Angeles Chamber to be effective, we need to make sure that we're looking at all aspects of that ecosystem where businesses are in. That is such a good point. You have so many different interests and industries with completely different requirements. How does how you organize the chamber serve these very, very diverse needs? Well, one of the ways in which we're organized is around our what we call our centers of excellence. And within that, what you will find is organizations that can help serve small businesses because everything that you just mentioned there, here in Los Angeles, we, are, we know that we're fueled by a small businesses, small to medium-sized businesses. And so the support network that needs to be in place to ensure that they are achieving uh, contracts and business development opportunities that's an important pillar at the chamber. That's important for us to make sure that we do not leave those small businesses out of the equation from of these growth. various sectors. from the various sectors. Having industry expertise at the chamber is important because just like you pointed out, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's entertainment, whether it's 
aerospace, they all live here in Los Angeles. Those industries thrive here. And so for us, it's important to cast a wide net of experts, of uh, regional leaders that can help those businesses within those sectors thrive. The chamber is a perfect place to convene, to connect, to lead in some of those issues that are affected in those, in those industries. Uh, and we do that. We do that in a very intentional manner. We have a policy system that is set up at the chamber where we can address policy issues. And it's a broad range. It's inclu including things like public transportation. Exactly. Infrastructure, because if the infrastructure isn't right, if it does not serve both the interests of the community and the diverse interests of businesses, then we have a, a drag on the ability of businesses to thrive. It, exactly, and let me just uh, take it one step further. This is where our larger corporations and our larger uh, corporate partners um, come into play at the chamber because if you're an organization that is headquartered outside of Los Angeles, you're looking at the region. You're not looking at downtown, you're not looking at the west side, you're looking at the region. Huge customer base. Huge customer base, they're using the ports, they're using through their, through their logistics, they're going out to the Inland Empire, they're going out to the rest of the country. And so for us, it's important that we have that connection with those larger corporations. That's why they're important members as well, because their needs of reaching their customers are just as important as the small businesses that work here. So through our policy councils, that's how we can be helpful in advocating for some of the business issues and that need to be addressed here, either whether it's Los Angeles in California or in Washington, D.C. Now, the chamber has had a 130-year yes. history here. How many women have led the chamber so far? How many Latinas have, <laughs> have uh, led the chamber up till up, up, up to now in these 130 years? Well, I was appointed August of 2018, and I became the first woman to lead the chamber uh, and the first Latina to lead the chamber as well. Uh, I'm very proud of that. I think it's important to recognize when there are ceilings that have been shattered. And uh, I have been uh, blessed that I've been welcomed in such a manner, uh, not only within uh, the building at the chamber, but across the community here in Los Angeles. And I'm really looking forward to working with so many great partners that we have not only in the business community, but also within the uh, nonprofit, the philanthropy organizations, the educational institutions. Uh, it's been a great onboarding to the chamber. And there's an aspect of somebody who has broken a glass ceiling where you, you have, in a sense, a dual role. There's the role of continuity, where it actually doesn't make any difference whatsoever um, uh, what your gender is or what your background is. And then there's an aspect where it makes all the difference in the world. And you're living this kind of dual reality. Talk about those two aspects and, and, and how that enriches the chamber going forward. The chamber has been around for over 130 years and has been very impactful here in Los Angeles in building the city and building the region. There are several examples that can be cited here in uh, this region. And so when I look at the chamber, I look at it as a, an organization that has had a great legacy that we can build upon. Because as we see shifts in our economy, the way we consume goods, the way we travel, the way we interact uh, within our own uh, communities, that uh, there's an opportunity there to use the chamber's uh, platform and the good work that the chamber has done to then reach new heights, to go to the next level, and to say, how do we, as a chamber organization, help this economy move forward as things are shifting, as there are moves? There's emerging businesses happening all the time. Here in Los Angeles, we have great diversity, but it's not just the diversity of our people, it's diversity of the industry sectors that we talked about earlier, the, differences in, in food, in arts and entertainment, and, and um, you know, the educational institutions that are here. 
all of that to me contribute to the diversity that is here that is a real asset for us to make sure that as we move our economy forward, as we vision and have that vision off into the future, that we are tapping into every asset that is here in Los Angeles. And you're also helping your constituents on both the consumer side and on the producer uh, side to deal with the positive and negative aspects of, of disruption of a modern uh, economy. Yes. Um, I came over on a ride-sharing yes. um, uh, 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 ride today, uh, three or four years ago. Um, it would have been a taxi, uh, or I would have walked, or I would have used public transportation. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would have rented a car. That has real consequences for the businesses, for your members. I think you, you uh, are absolutely right that we're talking about shifts. You know, the shifts in how we consume goods today. You know, we like to do it on our phone. We're ordering something and then it gets delivered. Seems like could... 24 hours later. And there's a whole lot of, um, you know, folks that were employed, let's say in retail, right. that have now changed. And I think that's an, a very important topic for the chamber, uh, not only from an advocacy perspective around workforce, on making sure that we are training our, um, our workforce for the jobs of the future, but that we're prepared to retrain them and that we're preparing a workforce that can be adaptable, that can be flexible, because we know that jobs will evolve in the future. So what you're saying is retraining is not an event. Retraining is a process that never ends. It never ends, and I, I believe that in the next 10 years, it's gonna be more frequent that we see the need for that. And that's why at the Chamber, we work so closely with our community colleges. We work closely with our businesses to wanna to make sure that we're understanding their needs. And we work closely with um, folks in the nonprofit sector to make sure that we're understanding their services that, that they are providing to make sure there's a link. One of the greatest assets of the chamber is its convening power. And to be able to bring business and the educational systems and the community systems together, then we can create solutions that can help our uh, local employees here, that can help students coming right out of school, to give them an avenue to participate in the workforce of the future. Maria Salinas, thank you so much thank for you. sharing the work of the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Great.